Hey, what's up everybody, it's Alan here, and welcome to the first episode of the Completionist from Scratch series. So again, it's been a while since I have uploaded a video, it was back in October when I uploaded my vlog, but I think I finally figured out what I wanted to do on RuneScape in terms of content-wise and account-wise. So, I did mention in that video that I pretty much just wanted to play the game, have no account restrictions, and basically just try and work up a beast main. Just make a new account from scratch and try to get all of the stats on it, max level, um, achievement diaries cape, quest cape, music cape, all of the pets in game, I'm pretty much going to be on a journey to doing that. And I know it's going to take me two to three years, it all depends on how much I play pretty much, but I'm really confident in doing this this time around, and I think I could work up a beastly main, just try and make this account pretty awesome. So I am going to follow kind of like a maxing order. If you guys know who the YouTuber Autumn Elegy is, I'm pretty much going to follow his completionist guide or at least his maxing guide. And I'm also going to put a, it's not a paste bin, but it's like a text file of that completionist list in the YouTube description. So you guys can check that out if you want to do so. And how I'm formatting this series is it's going to be 24 hours playtime per episode. And I'm really a quality over quantity kind of person. So I think this is going to be a good thing and it could take me a while to maybe get some clips or 24 hours of gameplay. I use, or I usually average around four to five hours of playtime per day. It's usually before I go to work. I do work at a restaurant, so it all depends on how much I play, so it could be about four to six days before I get 24 hours playtime. We'll see. And my first goals are to get 99 thieving, cooking, hunter, and fishing. Those are some skills that I really want to get out of the way first, and it's really good if you go for those 99s first. And I know with Hunter, you can make a lot of money from doing that. With Fishing, if you do Barbarian Fishing at, say, level 58, you can easily get 75 Strength and Agility by the time you hit 99. So, 99 Fishing with Barbarian Fishing is saving you some time in Agility and Strength as well. Also, Cooking, just because it's a nice 99 to have, and Thieving as well. So, what I'm doing right now is pickpocketing men and Lumbridge. I'm doing this until level 5. And once I do this, I'm actually going to do some Wilderness Looting. And basically what that is, if you go to world 318 and you're a member, that's the bounty hunter world, and all you do is sit in the wilderness and just watch people PK each other or just run around and loot items. And honestly, you can make 200 to 300 to say 400k an hour. It all depends on how lucky you are with items, and a lot of your money is going to come from sharks, for example. Sharks is the most common food that people use in the wilderness, or it can be like karambwans or maybe even angler fish, I'm not too sure, but a lot of the money comes from sharks. So, once I hit level 5 thieving, that's where I'm going to head, and I'm going to build up a decent amount of GP from that, because I'm also going to try and start farming as early as I can in this series. It will be nice to have started, and my goal will be level 15, just so I can do oak trees. I do have a method that I will be showing you guys later on in this episode, probably a few clips from now. So right now, I'm just going to get level 5 thieving, and we'll head over to the wilderness. So I just wanted to record this clip really quick. This is pretty much what a standard inventory looks like in the wilderness. You guys can see that I have a few magic short bows, which I was lucky enough to get. Some climbing boots, which are actually worth a lot of GP. They're worth around 800 to 900 coins. And like I said in the last clip, a lot of the money does come from sharks. You can expect your inventory to be about 20 to 25k. It really all depends what items you get. I know in the past I've gotten like a granite maul, a dragon scimitar, even mysterious emblems as well. I've gotten those items. And... I'm about maybe 5 to 10 minutes in this hour so far. You guys can see some of my bank right there. I even got some tuna potatoes as well. Or I think those are just buttered potatoes. I'm not too sure. But I'm going to finish out this hour and we'll see how much GP I make. After one hour of wilderness looting, this is what I am left with. You guys can see I obtained a lot of sharks along the way. Around 200 of them. I also obtained a lot of rune arrows as well. Just a bunch of random items you guys can expect. I even picked up a bunch of teen capes some iron plate bodies, some snakeskin boots, rings of recoil, lobsters. There's just a whole lot of stuff that you can expect to get. You never know exactly what you're going to get in just a random hour of wilderness looting. So you guys can see there's just so many items that PKers use. I even got some bolt racks, some teleports, just a bunch of random different items, even some rune knives as well, which go for around 1k each, which I'm surprised I was able to accumulate a lot of them. So we're going to sell this all off at the Grand Exchange. We'll see how much GP I end up with.
So after selling my entire bank, I'm left with 421k GP, which is really nice. Which pretty much means I made 421k GP in an hour. I mean, maybe give or take a few 1k GP because of the items from Tutorial Island. But right now, I'm going to start the farming training. I will need to buy a saw, a hammer, some planks, and some nails as well. I do need level 5 construction in order to plant bagged dead trees in my POH. And to buy the bagged dead trees, I need to go buy them from the gardener in Falador. I think it's exactly 84 of them that I will need to buy. And I think they average around 1k per in GP price. So I'm looking to get level 15 farming doing this method, which will be pretty nice. And usually in the past, I would normally quest in order to get my farming level up by doing Fairy Tale Part 1. But since I already have a nice little bit of GP on this account, I don't mind wasting it in order to get 15 farming. And by that time, I will plant oak trees and slowly work my way up with the farming levels. My goal is just to at least start farming on this account early on. In all of the other accounts I've ever created on RuneScape, I've always lacked farming training. So I think by the time I hit a few 99s on this account, I will definitely have 99 farming as well. So I'm going to start the training. I do need 5 construction. After that, we'll do some bag dead trees, and I will see you guys in just a second. Now this is what farming looks like in the POH, how to train it. So essentially, you have a garden, and you click on the build big tree space, and then click on tree. And what's nice is that you get both construction and farming XP as well. I actually did not know this until I tried it. I thought I would just get farming XP. So this is actually a nice little way to get some construction XP as well if you're not planning on doing crude wooden chairs. However, like I said in the last clip, this can be a little bit on the expensive side. The bag dead trees are worth about 1k GP each from the gardener in Falador. And you also need some watering cans as well, which is why I brought a few of them. So once I get 15 farming, I can have access to oak trees. And yeah, let's just get 15 farming. Alrighty, it's time to hit level 15. Let's click build, build. And there we go, 15 farming, and what I'm going to do now is go back to the Grand Exchange, and I'm actually going to buy acorns for farming. Now, I could just buy oak saplings and pay the extra bit of cash to do that, but I will save a lot of GP if I buy the acorns from scratch and do it that way. And the four trees that I'm able to plant at the moment are Lumbridge, Varrock, Taverly, and Falador. I could use the one in Trinome Stronghold, but I'm going to wait until the Trinome Village quest to do that one just to save me a little bit of running. If I go ahead and do it right now, it would be very inefficient. So, time to do a mini farm run, and yep, let's get the farming gains. These are the recent transactions I made on my account, and like I said in last clip, I did buy filled plant pots, and I put the acorns in here just to do it from scratch to save me a bit of GP. And also, when you plant oak trees, if you pay the farmer, he requires one tomato basket, so what I also did was buy 675 tomatoes and put them all into baskets. I could have just bought in regular tomato baskets, but I would have lost a lot of GP doing it that way. So honestly, a good money maker would be to make tomato baskets, honestly, or apple baskets, or any sort of fruit basket is profitable. So I went the cheap approach and just did it from scratch. I also bought myself farming supplies, some more teleports, and I sold off any planks and iron nails that I did not use before. So it's all time to start a farming run right now, and I think with each oak sapling, I forget how much XP I get, it's like 400 something maybe, I'm not quite sure, I'll have to look it up again. But it's time to do a mini farm run, and I'm slowly going to do this each and every single day, also as often as I can, even if it's in the middle of the night, gotta wake up and get the farm gains. But we're going to start this right now, and then we will start to do something else. Alright, the first farm run is finished, and I think it takes about a little over three hours for the oak trees to successfully plant and be grown all the way. Now, what I'm going to do right now is do a little bit of an interesting money-making method. I'm not too sure if it's going to make money at this very moment, but we will test it out. So I'm buying a knife right now, and what it is, it's buying pineapples and cutting them into pineapple rings. And I think people primarily use these to make pineapple pizzas in order to make profit. So it bought for 177 GP, let's cut it. Let's sell it now, and let's see what it goes for. It goes for 316, which honestly really isn't that bad. Let's look at the history. So I'm making roughly 140 coins on these, maybe 139, I think, which isn't too bad on pineapples. So I think what I'm going to do is take my 141K, and I'm going to invest all of this money into pineapples, and pretty much to see how much I can make off of them. Honestly, 130-something GP isn't that bad on these. In the past, I was actually able to make like 300 or so off of one pineapple just selling the rings. Like, it was insane profit at one point. So pretty much what I do is I take my knife, and then I also have the pineapples as well. And one of the best ways to do this is withdrawing six at a time. 
use the knife on the pineapple, cut them into the rings, and then it fills up your whole inventory. There's also another way of doing this, but it's uh, very spam clicky. What it is, you withdraw an entire inventory and it cuts all the pineapples, but then it slowly drops them to the floor. So once you do an inventory, you just pick up all, pick up all of the rings on the floor. But I prefer doing it this way just so I don't have to spam click on the floor. So I'm going to do this. We'll see how much GP I make. So after cutting all of the pineapples, I sold them all, and I made approximately 109k from this, and it took me about 30 to 40 minutes, maybe like 35 minutes or something like that. But it was really nice to make 109k from this. I will definitely need this cash when I start my magic training to level 51, which I am going to obtain right away on this account. But for right now, I'm going to go back to thieving, and I'm going to head over to Ardoin, and from levels 5 to 20, I'm going to thieve from the cake stall, and then 20 to 43 at the silk stall, there's probably a better way of training your thieving early on after, say, level 30 or something, or even 35. But from 20 to 43, I'm going to stay at the silk stall. It's just the method I've always done in the past. And yeah, let's go ahead and hit that, and then we'll move on in the thieving games. So after about two hours, I'm finally able to hit 43 thieving right there. And it took me a little bit of time, and what I did was just power drop the silk. I used auto hotkeys, and I just spammed some keys in order to mass drop my inventory. When I was doing this on an Iron Man, I would usually bank it in the past and then sell it to the silk trader. But since it's not really worth a lot on a main account, and there's better money making methods, I just went ahead and dropped them. So yeah, it took me about two hours. And what I'm going to do right now is get level 51 in magic in order to have teleports and the Ardoin teleport as well. You guys are probably already noticing that I use just tabs, but if I ever need just runes for teleports, I'll have the magic level to do so. And I also hit 25 farming as well, which is pretty good. I'm almost at fruit trees, which I think the first one I can plant is at 33. I think it's a banana tree. So right now I'm just going to buy some supplies, and I'm also planning on completing some quests as well. So I'll see you guys in just a second. This is the rundown of what I bought. I bought a Staff of Air, also a Staff of Fire as well. I will need to cast Air Strike until level 13, and then I can cast Fire Strike. So this is pretty much why I bought both of them. I also bought 20,000 Air Runes as well, and also a lot of Mind Runes as well, but you guys can't see that because of the trade history. I also bought an Amulet of Glory, a Ring of Wealth, and some Magic Gear as well. Just leather gloves, leather boots, blue wizard hat, blue wizard robe. It's pretty much newbie gear. And I also bought a Ring of Wealth scroll, which I will be using later on. I will need 50k in order to actually use it on a Ring of Wealth. And I was at Chaos Druids for a little bit, and I also got 20 magic as well. I did get a looting bag, which was pretty nice, so I kind of want to go do some Lava Dragons. Hopefully, I do not die at them. We'll see. Maybe I can do an entire inventory there. It will be really nice if I can. Who knows, I might get a Visage. If I were to get a Visage at my first trip at Lava Dragons, that would be fucking sick. That would be honestly too crazy. So what I'm going to do right now is buy some supplies for some quests that I want to complete, which will be Witch's House and Waterfall quests just right off the bat. So I need some cheese, and also I'm going to need some ropes, also various runes as well for Waterfall quests. You guys are probably already familiar with these quests, so I don't need to really talk about them all too much. So let's go ahead and complete these quests and get the gains. There we go, Witch's House completed, a pretty easy quest honestly, and this XP gets me to level 25 hit points, so now it's time for Waterfall Quest, and we'll get this done really quickly, and then we'll go train my magic at Fire Giants. Now this is pretty crazy. So I just did complete Waterfall Quest, and that got me to level 30 attack and 30 strength, and you guys already know that I was training my magic here. Now I'm killing Fire Giants, and I was taking a look into the rare drop table just on the RuneScape wiki while I'm AFKing, the lava dragon, or not lava dragons, but the fire giants. And the second that I looked at dragon spear on the rare drop table on the RuneScape wiki page, a dragon spear appears in game. So I actually got this, which was crazy. I've never gotten a drop like this ever. Granted, it's only worth, what is it, 86k? So it's not really a lot. I guess in the early stages of this account, it's a lot to me. 86k, I mean, my bank is less than 1 mil, so it's an okay drop. But it's just odd to think that I'm looking at the RuneScape wiki page. I see Dragon Spear, I'm looking at the drop weight, drop rate, which is like 1 in 380 something, I think, I'm not too sure. And then it appears on the ground, so, I mean, even though it's worth 86k, it's still a pretty rare drop, so I'm pretty hyped to get it, honestly. I'm gonna go sell this in the Grand Exchange, get that bonk loot. 
Now this is pretty exciting. I actually completed a whole Lava Dragons trip. I did not get PK'd. I did see some PKers from time to time, just some rushers, but I was able to hop worlds really quickly. So I'm really happy that I got out of the wilderness alive. Let's price check this 270k just from drops, which is really nice. Keep in mind, I'm only casting Fire Strike, so it doesn't really cost a lot with magic. I'm just using Mind Runes and Air Runes. So this is pretty nice. Got Lava Dragon Bones, Dehydes, some Lava Scales. Uh, nothing too hot, really. No Visage, honestly, which I was kind of sad about, but it is a 1 in 10,000 drop. I did get a Rune Kite Shield, which was pretty cool. 35k right there. So this is honestly good money for a low level account, just as long as you don't get PK'd. It can be quite annoying if you do get PK'd because then you're all the way back in Lumbridge and you have to run all the way back out there. And it just can be a pain. And depending on what you bring with you, you can actually, actually lose quite a bit of GP. So I just made a mini loot tab for now. So we'll try to build that up. Now I'm just focused on getting level 51 magic. So I did return back to Fire Giants and I actually got myself a little bit of loot. I actually did get a Rune Scimitar, which was pretty interesting. I've played Iron Man maybe twice now. And one of my first goals was to always get a Rune Scimitar, and I honestly would go like 500 or 1000 kills dry, and I got this Rune Scimitar in honestly under 50 kills, which is pretty sick. I mean, I just can't believe I get it on a main account, and then I'm on an Iron Man, and I go so dry on it, so you know how that goes. And I got a whole lot of goodies, got a lot of grimy herbs, some death runes, and... Honestly, whenever I get Ranars nowadays, I'm really hyped, because they are 10k each, like... Honestly, they are so much in GP. It reminds me of pre-EOC when they were like 14k GP each or some crazy amount. So, I do have 50k GP now. We are going to use the Ring of Wealth scroll on the Ring of Wealth. And we're going to make it imbued. There we go. It's actually been a while since I've owned one of these. Since I've played on an actual main account in old school. And what I'm planning on doing right now is going over to Thugs in the Wilderness. And with the imbued ring, I'm going to see if I can get any clue scrolls. If you kill thugs in the wilderness, I think their drop rate is 1 in 128, and with a Ring of Wealth imbued, it's 1 in 64. And I'm going to train my magic there for a little bit. We'll see if I get a clue. Who knows? I might go dry. Honestly, my RNG has probably depleted because of the Dragon Spear from earlier. We'll see. But right now, I'm just going to head over thugs. Let's see if we can get some easy clues. First easy clue scroll completed on this account. We get a black plate body, a Guthix robe top, 5 purple sweets, and 34 body runes. Honestly, not a bad clue to start off with. Guthix robe top. I mean, it all depends on what I can sell it for. Only 36k GP. Mm, not too good. Could have gotten a better loot. But I got some cash with the purple sweets, I guess. So just those two rewards alone is 54k. I guess it's not that bad. And I got that clue in maybe like 10 kills. So I was really lucky with that, honestly. All I gotta say is not too bad for my first easy clue. Just completed another farming run on this account. 33 farming, which is very nice. Let's look at fruit trees. Like I said earlier in the video, I now have access to banana trees. And I can get some awesome XP off of fruit trees. I think all of them together take about 16 hours to grow. So, it does take a little bit for them. But if you do them as often as you can, the XP does add up a lot. Now, I'm also, since I'm 33 farming, I do also have access to Ranar weeds. I am going to test out planting them. I'm really hoping they don't die on me as often as I think they are. They are 42k roughly for just one seed. Now I can make some decent money off of these. Ranars are still going for about 10k each. I also do need to buy some apples as well for the fruit trees, um, the banana ones. I'm really hoping the Ranar seeds do not die on me. I think I can get about 6 to 8 of them with super compost. Obviously if I had the magic level and the requirements for lunar diplomacy, I could use I think some of those spells in order to get more of a yield. Or I think if you use like magic secateurs as well, you get a larger herb yield. I'd have to research it more, but you can make a lot of money just off of herb runs. Maybe I'll hold off like often with them until I'm a higher farming level because I think it all depends on your farming level if, or how often they die. So I'll have to check that out, do some research on that. But level 33 farming, I'm pretty happy with my farming gains so far. Here are some more easy clues that I completed, and this was my second one. Obviously a shit loot, a steel pickaxe, and a black pickaxe. I'm honestly hoping to get something good eventually. Right here was really good. A black wizard hat gold, four purple sweets, and also I think that's a black pickaxe as well. I'm trying to look at it through Sony Vegas. I can't really tell though. I think it is one though. Obviously 26.9k. No, the black wizard hat gold has to be worth more than that. We also got a studded body, nine cooked trout, and I think that's an oak longbow as well. And then a steel pickaxe, 
32 air runes, I think, and another studded body. So I only did a few clue scrolls just to level up my magic. I was killing thugs, obviously, to get these clues. I have not yet been to the hand members. I'm going to save that until I get a higher theming level. And 51 magic I did finally achieve, and the clip should just come up in just a second. I am at pest control right now. There we go. And I was racking up some early points. I will eventually go for full void on this account, obviously. I just thought I would get some early points out of the way. But I am 51 magic, which is nice. So now that I have my magic level, let's go back to thieving. And I think I'm going to do the feud quest that should get me to level 45 thieving. There we go, the feud quest completed, 1 quest point, 15k thieving XP, blackjack, and a desert disguise, and this should get me to 45 thieving, there we go. This quest did take me a little bit to achieve, especially with the fights at the end with the Menophyte champion and the desert champion, just because my combat levels are so low, it took me a while, I did need to use a lot of food, honestly, and then try and, uh, I think it was flinch them. You can't really flinch them a whole lot, but you can at least attempt to. Anyways, I was able to kill them both and complete the quest. So, now I have access to blackjacking. This is pretty much what I'm going to do until 99. I may start Pyramid Plunder at 91, but we'll see. I'm just glad that I got this quest out of the way. And this is where I'm going to wrap up the first video of Completionist from Scratch. 24 hours in-game playtime achieved, and I'm pretty happy with the progress that I made in this first episode. I thought I was maybe going to slack a little, but pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. So we got 36 attack, 30 strength, 20 defense, 9 prayer, we also have 51 magic, which I'm happy about as well. 16 construction, 39 hit points, and I did get 69 thieving. I did start blackjacking from 45 to 55 was from the bearded bandits and Paul Nivni each, and then 55 to 65 is the non-bearded ones, and then 65 and beyond is Menophyte thugs. This is what my bank looks like at the moment. We got a bunch of cash, 215k, just a bunch of random items, runes, adamant scimitars, ring of wealth. Um, which I did go to Lava Dragons earlier, and I actually did die at them, which I was kind of sad about. I wanted to make a little bit of cash, and when you die with an imbued Ring of Wealth, you just get your normal Ring of Wealth back. And then I think 50k drops for the person, whoever killed you. It was kind of sad, but, you know, what can I do? There's PKers everywhere, and then Jugs of Wine as well. This is also the loot tab I have going on. Everything else is pretty much standard. I also did make, like, a little bit of a farming tab as well, which you guys will see in just a second. Just a bunch of random items. Uh, my... Working clue tab, I guess you can call it. I only have one nice item in here so far, the Black Wizard Hat Gold. And you guys can see my farming tab. I've got a bunch of oak saplings, some tomato baskets, just a bunch of stuff. So pretty decent bank for episode one, I gotta say. And if you guys enjoyed the episode, be sure to give this episode a like. Also be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I am looking to rebuild it to what it once was with thousands of views on these videos. I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to this entire series in general. And also, if you have anything that you want to comment on, anything about the video, leave that in the comment section below. I will read all of the comments. Other than that, this is going to be the end of the episode. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in episode 2.